What's up, guys? It's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now, we are on Chapter 5 in our series of Dry Suit Diving, and we really hope this series helps you pass your final exam. What we would encourage you to do is make sure you're seeking out your local SSI Dry Suit Diving instructor to get properly trained so that you can stay safe while diving it. So with that being said, let's jump into Chapter 5. Starting out in chapter five, we need to talk about the prep work before you dive your dry suit. Now, typically speaking, the prep work means we're gonna trim the neck seals and wrist seals to fit for comfort. And if you have a latex or a silicone seal, you wanna make sure that you don't trim off too much. So I would encourage you to take one ring off at a time and try it on after each adjustment to see if it properly fits. Once it's still comfortable to wear, but it's still gonna be tight enough to create a seal, you should be good to go. Now that we've got the suit adjusted, we need to go ahead and don the suit. Now, you may have to put your undergarments on beforehand if you're diving, say, colder water, and this is where we can really benefit from our dive buddies. Now, whether you have a self-doning suit or not, I would encourage you to use your dive buddy to help you get suited up. He can make sure that that zipper is closed properly and that nothing gets stuck in the zipper. He can also make sure that everything is adjusted. If you have a telescoping waist and you need to pull the crotch strap through, he can also assist you. Now, if you're diving, say, a neoprene suit and you need help rolling down your seals, that's where your dive buddy can come in. During your SSI dry suit course, your SSI dry suit instructor is going to help you properly adjust and get you fitted for your dry suit so that you can have a safe and comfortable dive. Now that we've got the suit adjusted, we've got the suit on, we need to jump in and do a weight test with the suit. And you're gonna do the same weight test that you do with wetsuits. You're gonna basically stay at the surface, you're gonna deflate the air out of your BC, you're gonna put just a little bit of squirt of air in the dry suit itself so that we eliminate squeeze. We're gonna take a normal breath at the surface and hold it and see if we float at eye level. If you don't float at eye level, you're gonna simply add weight until you can. And then once you're there, you're gonna simply exhale and you should descend down through the bottom. As you're descending down, you can add air to the suit to eliminate squeeze or you can manipulate your buoyancy with the buoyancy compensator. Now, I do want to state this. A lot of instructors will teach you that you run your buoyancy with your BC. Some will teach you that you run your buoyancy with a dry suit. I actually do both, but I will tell you, if you're properly weighted, when you add air to your suit to eliminate squeeze, you're also going to change your buoyancy uh, control system or your buoyancy in general underwater. So with that being said, by getting properly weighted from the get-go, you shouldn't have any additional trouble adjusting trim or buoyancy while diving your dry suit. So let's talk about some of the buoyancy and trim issues that divers do have when underwater. One, if they get too much air trapped in their feet, it can make them simply go inverted. And one of the worst things for a dry suit is to get into a rapid ascent while inverted. Your SSI dry suit instructor is going to teach you a roll method to roll yourself out to prevent that. Another problem is you can get trapped air. If the suit is not properly fitted for you, you can get trapped air throughout the suit, and of course you can have trim issues while underwater. This is where training and practice really comes in. <clears throat> your local SSI dry suit instructor is going to assist you during your training to make sure that you can properly adjust and use the suit while underwater. Now to finish up chapter five, I wanna encourage you to practice, practice, and practice. And when you think you're good enough, continue to practice. Because dry suit diving can be dangerous if you're not properly trained. And you need to make sure you're seeking out your local SSI dry suit diving instructor to get properly trained. Once you do have your suit, take it to the pool several times, practice it, then take it in open water and practice at shallow depths. As you descend deeper and deeper, you will learn that you're going to be putting more air in that suit. So make sure you practice dumping air from the suit as well and try your best to stay neutrally buoyant and in that trim position during your descents and your ascents as well, and you'll be a much better dry suit diver for it. Guys, that's going to do it for Chapter 5 in this series of the SSI Dry Suit Diver Program. Stay tuned. We're going to finish up with Chapter 6, and I am going to be linking in all the videos that we've done so far and today's video and the next video that you see, a dry suit, more in-depth dry suit video series that we did on the different types of materials, how you don't them, how you doff them, how you take care of them, and even how you store them. So make sure you check those playlists down below, and we really think it'll help you out as a dry suit diver. But that's going to be it for Chapter 5. Stay tuned for Chapter 6. I'm going to go ahead and sign off today. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.